In this video, I'm going to provide a refresher on how to answer a moment of inertia problem as part of your FE exam preparation. But first, let me remind you that the FE exam or Fundamentals of Engineering is the first step in getting your professional engineering license. And through the videos on this channel, including this one, you will learn not only how to properly prepare for the exam, but how to ensure you pass the FE exam. So please be sure to subscribe to my channel here as my weekly videos will help you pass the FE exam. And if you leave questions in the comments below, I will answer them on future videos. So let's dive into this week's moment of inertia problem. This sample problem has been provided to us by Prep FE. Prep FE is one of the most effective FE exam self-study prep services out there and happens to be one of the most affordable too. Prep FE is an app that gives you access to countless sample FE problems to bolster your self-study efforts. You can visit prepfe.com forward slash redeem and use the discount code in the description of this video to receive 10% off and get some great FE practice problems. All right, so let's dive into this week's moment of inertia problem. What is most nearly the area moment of inertia about the x-axis of the composite shape shown below? And here you can see the four possible answers. Now let me start off by giving you an explanation. You're going to have to refer to the moment of inertia parallel axis theorem section in the statics chapter of the FE reference handbook. You're going to need to use the parallel axis theorem to find the moment of inertia about the x-axis for this composite shape. Ultimately, you're going to have to solve the equation below. But let's dive into it in some more detail here and let's define the equation. Here you can see the terms of the equation laid out. The d is the distance between the two axes in question. The ixc or iyc is the moment of inertia about that centroidal axis. And then of course i is the moment of inertia about the new axis. Now, the trick with this question is that in order to determine the moment of inertia about the x-axis of this composite shape, we must break up the shape into common smaller shapes. In this case, the composite shape shown in the problem can be broken down into a triangle and a rectangle. You're going to refer to the area and centroid table in the statics chapter of the FE reference handbook, and there you're going to be able to find the equations for these common shapes which we're going to go through now. Now I'm going to leave the, the big equation at the top of the slides here that I talked about early on that we're going to ultimately need, but here we need to calculate the variables for the triangle first. And here you can see the equations to do that. So you're going to calculate your A term, your IXC, remember you're going to need to find that D, that distance which you also can see there, and you're going to go and plug through all these equations and you will be able to determine the terms for your triangle. Next we're going to have to do the same thing. We're going to have to calculate these values for the rectangle component of the shape. And again you can see all the equations simply plugged in here. You can actually pause the video here and go through the equation if you'd like. Secondly, and again I'm going to leave the master equation at the top, you're going to want to calculate those same terms for the rectangle component of this composite shape. And again, you can see all of the terms here laid out. You'll plug in the proper numbers based on the problem given to you, different lengths, and you will solve all these variables that you'll need. Now, once you've solved these terms for both the triangle and the rectangle, you're gonna plug in all of these values into the parallel axis theorem which you can see here on the screen. And again, remember, the way that you're gonna solve this problem is you have to, you know, kind of determine that you're going to have to cut this shape up into two smaller shapes. If you do that, you'll be able to solve this relatively easily and you'll determine your answer, which you see on the bottom of the screen, 9,256, which was answer number D. I hope you found this week's video helpful. In upcoming videos, I will answer more FE exam questions and run through more practice problems. Pass the FE exam will publish videos weekly, so please be sure to click the subscribe button as you'll get expert tips and tricks, including practice problem solutions weekly to ensure that you pass the FE exam. And these are tips that you can't get anywhere else. And believe me, you won't want to miss a single video. 
And please, I encourage you to ask questions in the comments below and I will read and respond to them in future videos. Maybe you have a specific topic that you'd like me to cover or a question that you need answered. Pass the FE exam, we'll have you covered. I'll see you next week on Pass the FE exam. Thank you.